Welcome to Unsigned Long, a new web series where I showcase my long-term, multi-part projects. Today on Unsigned Long, part one of my 2016 Hackaday prize entry, the Grow Cube. The idea behind the Grow Cube or the Grow Box is to have an indoor hydroponic garden for for growing microgreens uh, or salads or, or small vegetables that can fit in, in in a small space even a countertop space the concept behind it began with the idea of a what is called a 1020 tray which is approximately 10 inches deep by 20 inches across or a little more than 25 centimeters this way and about 60 or more centimeters that way um, so the whole box is essentially built around these trays and the footprint is just slightly bigger um, if we measure it uh, i chose a footprint of about um, 35 centimeters deep and i believe 65 centimeters wide 64. Um, this doesn't take too much space and it also allows a little bit of room maneuvering on the inside around the trays of course so the way the system works is that you have one tray uh, uh, that essentially each tray rests on the structure that is uh, i guess i call it the lighting rig or the lighting tray uh, lighting rail and um, the lighting is is provided by these full spectrum leds that shine light down on on the bottom tray and the top tray, of course, rests on, on this uh, rig, if you will. And there's another one up top, or the topmost uh, lighting rig that also shines light. I, I, I drew this kind of pink area here as an example. Um, of course, for example, if you have microgreens, you can uh, just move the whole structure down and then perhaps have uh, this tray could be something with taller vegetables either salads or spinach or, or maybe even if there's enough room uh, maybe even a small pepper plant or tomato plant it doesn't matter as long as the height is not an issue and there's enough space for lighting to to come down and, and the vegetables to grow you can essentially plant anything the original concept calls for a height of about 75 centimeters or about two and a half uh, foot um, so anything up to two and a half feet of, of vegetables would work so I mean if you just want to have one tray you can of course move um, this system out and then just have one tray of vegetables that will get their lighting from uh, the LEDs on top. Um, I forgot to draw the structure underneath, but uh, I suppose that if you expect your vegetables to grow large, you can, of course, start up with the tray very near the lights. And as the vegetables grow, you would just, you know, move, move it down. Um, of course, you could have multiple trays if you're really only going for microgreens. Uh, you could have, <clears throat> two three trays without any problem in the system uh, one on top of each other of course or I suppose you could have maybe three or four or five trays uh, it doesn't really matter how many you stack as long as they all fit there's ample room for the light to hit the, the, the vegetables or whatever you're growing beneath it's fine initially when I when I was drawing the concept I had envisioned that each rig was modular uh, and it would uh, you know it would make up the basically part of the structure however this didn't exactly work well for moving them up and down uh, especially with the ventilation on the side so the later iteration called for having these uh, vertical uh, structure beams uh, so the distance of course being that of of um, 120 millimeters so you, you can put a larger um, computer type fan uh, that could draw in or out the air and this also allowed for um, the lighting rig to be just um, again modular 
The idea behind the lighting rig is that you move it up as you need, need it uh, on the vertical axes. And then, um, you know, the trays rest on, on top of it so that, again, as, as the need grows, uh, it's, it's a flexible system going up and down. Um, the lighting rig is separate, if you will, from the structural rig, uh, allowing the upward motion. And it also uh, allows for these uh, clear channels so that even essentially even the fans could, if need be, be moved up or down to provide more or less ventilation at specific areas of, of, of the plants. So um, that's why I had to change for uh, to make uh, concessions for these uh, for, for vertical structuring as opposed to uh, the solid or, or cross structure that I, I guess I had here initially. Outside of that, uh, initially, the, since it's hydroponic system, uh, I thought about having a container with the water and the nutrients uh, that would, and a water pump that would go the initial idea was to have it underneath however i then realized that if i had to have it underneath uh, i guess I, I would lose this space if you will i mean the tray could go lower of course it still can't be too low since either since i haven't really drawn it but i mean i guess i would still have to have a tubing come out to return the water to um to the you know, to the nutrient chamber. So the idea would be, of course, that water would just go up through some tubing, through the pump, get sprayed at every level, and then, depending on if if we're doing a continuous recirculating uh, system or just once every hour, uh, depending on the amount of water that would come back out, uh, probably have tubing to, to take out the water. Uh, so that's the concept. In terms of monitoring, um, there's a few directions that the, that the project could take. Uh, I've just kind of drawn LCD screen here, but uh, originally the idea was to have temperature, humidity, pH, and electrical conductivity monitoring. And uh, in terms of humidity, uh, I thought about using something along the lines of a soil humidity hygrometer which you just stick into the the grow medium and I guess based on what the readouts are you could either decide to um, water the plants or you know just keep track of how it progresses uh, of course we could maybe just use something along the lines of this is a, a temperature and relative humidity which would monitor the humidity inside the whole structure as opposed to at the soil level that's also an indication of how i guess what the the environment is like so there's two ways to go about that but as a first step probably it'll just have regular temperature monitoring and we'll control the lights the lighting cycle how when the to turn on the leds when to turn them off and to see what the temperature is if, if I do figure out the pH uh, monitoring and the electroconductivity monitoring, then I will try to integrate them uh, later on down the road. So really the first step is just to be able to turn on, turn off the lighting at whatever intervals and to turn on and turn off the pump uh, either periodically or according to what the humidity is to give water to the plants. This would of course, um, allow for some automation in the system and possibly remote monitoring. The concept itself isn't something new and, and I mean it's not revolutionary um, but it it kind of it's a proof of concept that it could be done for countertop have it in your house if you want fresh vegetables you just go and cut some maybe plant another you know a little square or you know have it at the ready I believe that there's a uh, supermarket in Germany at the moment that is kind of building a full size or walk-in size kind of a grow chamber where people can now go and get fresh vegetables in the supermarket so there is definitely potential in the future for something along these lines and of course the monitoring and the water management and light management can of course be used in a greenhouse uh, or on industrial scale 
so the concept kind of uh, you know uh, evaluated here could potentially have other uses and not just be a countertop um, unit it, it could potentially grow and, and be used in a, a much larger scale so uh, that's so much really for the future however for a start it'll be a small desktop unit and hopefully uh, we'll get growing some kind of microgreens or maybe some salad that would of course be edible and that you can have in your house control it and um, aside from that <coughs> uh, the design just kind of shows you know like a front door and uh, the construction um, is out of aluminium uh, the particular size that I chose was 15 millimeter aluminium uh, tubing um, square tubing uh, it's lightweight it's pretty corrosive resistant um, it's not as I, I guess it wouldn't be as heavy as stainless steel but I don't think it's really necessary for this um, for this application and of course uh, the LED will also be connected to the aluminium so it would of course provide some cooling for for the LEDs and uh, again it'll be lightweight and easy to assemble so in the next video I hope to have the aluminium cut to begin with uh, structural assembly and to kind of have a look at how large the, the system will be and um, yeah so uh, that'll be in part two or part one if we consider this to be part zero the introduction of the the grow cube or the grow box for um for yeah the 2016 hackaday prize my entry for uh, for the competition thanks for watching hey thanks for watching if you like what you saw go ahead and hit that like button and consider subscribing i regularly put out new videos so stay tuned for more you can also find made to hack on the web and on social media